There you go. Boy, that's a pretty simple fix, isn't it? Just push the button. Well, they didn't want to hear me when I was in the council meeting or when I went in the bathroom, especially when I went in the bathroom. After the council meeting, you didn't want to hear me. My goodness, God is good. Uh, I, I want to give a word of explanation, and we're going to pray. Why we didn't have youth tonight is uh, we're, we were out of drivers. We didn't have a bona fide driver. The only driver we had was Terry, and she needed to be in the council meeting. Jonathan's in Minnesota. Uh, Jason's in Michigan. Uh, Justin has hurt his knee very badly, and so we were out of out of soap. We didn't have anybody to go get the kids, and over half the kids get picked up on the bus. So praise the Lord for the bus. So we're giving a week off. They don't meet with us tonight. And uh, anyway, pray for. Uh, Pray for our block party that we have coming this week. Now, let me tell you how that happened. We weren't planning to have the block party, but then I realized we still have these backpacks to give away. And if we don't give them away before the fair, kids are going to have backpacks. We want to give them one from Calvary so they come to Awana. So anyway, we did this big backpack giveaway. You'll hear more about it Sunday night. And, and hundreds of backpacks given away in uh, Montana. And so I got a hold of Jonathan and... Uh, Sybil and I said, let's, let's get this thing rolling. Let's get the block, that block party stuff from the association. And we've got to do it. We've got to do it on Sunday afternoon. I hate to do it on Sunday afternoon, but we've got to do it on Sunday afternoon. So two to four Sunday afternoon, we'll give away backpacks. We do have a list of school supplies that still need, we could use some more. And it'll be out on the board. Sybil said she'd put it there. But Terry, can you get it from me and make sure Sybil gets it? I'll tell you, the lady just came in is one untiring woman, Jeannie Chapin, on this mission trip. Jeannie, stand up. <laughs> this, she was, she was something else on the mission trip. And she and Terry ran that kitchen, and they ran a tight ship in there. Let me tell you, I, I know you get the report on Sunday night, but they got in the kitchen, and it was such a chaotic mess. And the next day, we're supposed to be helping organize things around this church. Because they had just lots of stuff that had been given to them, stuff that had been left by the previous church to be in the building. And so Terry and Jeannie got the idea, can we organize this kitchen? And did you organize the kitchen? I mean, you knew where everything was. And it wasn't that way when we got there. So praise the Lord for their, their help in the kitchen. They kept us well fed. That's for sure. Well, let's have a word of prayer. Jay, would you lead us in an opening prayer? Pray where the Lord can hear you. For this opportunity to be together to worship you, Father God, to learn about your word. Father, I thank you for those that are, that are here in attendance. Father, I pray for those that are on mission trip that you will bless and, and just spread your word. Father God, I'm thanking you for all those that have returned from mission trip. Father, I thank you for, for this country, Father. I, I just pray that you would bless it, that you would bless our leaders and, and uh, touch their hearts so they will make the right decisions. Father, I thank you for Pastor uh, Jonathan, for what he does, and Pastor Don. I just thank you that you strengthen them, them Father God, and just bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hymn number seven, and we don't sing very often, but you should not sing this him with a sour face because it's joyful joyful we adore thee how about that can you practice that smiling face joyful joyful we adore thee god of glory lord of love hearts unfold like flowers before thee opening to the sun above melt the clouds of
number 12 is not a hymn that we sing very often, and I'm not sure I can play the actual verse, but I can play the, the chorus, so we're going to sing the chorus. We may sing the, the verse Acapulco. You know what Acapulco is? It's a place in Mexico. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is your voice, lift up your voice, great is the Lord, great is the Lord, let's do the chorus again, great is the Lord, he is holy and just, by his power we trust. my father's world. Amen? Amen. What it is. I think I can play this. <clears throat> this is my father's of opinion about the next question I'm going to ask. And that's okay to have a division of opinion. How many are so excited that the state fair is coming to town? Five people. 
How many are so excited that the state fair is coming to town? Some of you are, okay. How many of you could care less that the state fair is coming to town? Okay. How many of you are getting out of town because the state fair is coming to town? All right. That's all right. You know what? It's okay. I got to tell you why I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, it'll be the last state fair that I'm living in the day for, but I believe I'll be back because I love to tell people about Jesus. And it's easy pickings in the Baptist tent. It's interesting when I say that, they're there to hear you listen, hear you talk. Hardest problem I have uh, when I manage the Baptist tent is keeping some of our witnesses to three minutes. Taylor was, Taylor was long-winded with his three minutes. Ten minutes in, I say, Taylor, you're through there, buddy. You know, you got to quit talking. Jonathan's not much better. You know, they're both talented at talking, right? Donald back there, he could talk forever to somebody. But this is the rule with the three minutes. We're going to give them our story in three minutes. And if all we do is give them our story in three minutes, they're done. But if they start asking questions, we can go longer. Amen. I'm excited about that. There are some open dates. Uh, We are responsible for the Saturday, part of the Saturday, the 20th of the fair, uh, the second Saturday of the fair. Our youth are going on the Wednesday night, the 17th of the fair. There are some other times. The other thing I'm excited about the fair is my three- and five-year-old granddaughters are coming on the opening day of the fair with their mom and dad. And so uh, mom and dad can keep up with the kids, and I can pay for the funnel cake, and we can have a good time <laughs> together. All right, Psalms chapter 89. Psalms chapter 89. So if you'd like to work at the fair, if you're willing to be on call, Jay, to work at the fair, Jay's done this before, he'll be on call, and he'll... We'll set him down and bring people to him. And uh, he'll hit them with their stick if they won't listen to him. <laughs> uh, Psalms chapter 89. Have you ever been perplexed about God's promises? This psalm talks about that. And my secretary today, I don't know where she went off to, but uh, Sybil, she, she said, you're going to do all... 52 verses? I said, I am. Just wait till I get to Psalms 119. That's going to be a fun night. Psalms 89. (laughs) Verses 1 and 2 are together. They say, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. Some of you have heard that contemporary praise song. "I, I will sing of your love forever. I will sing of your love forever. That's one of those forever songs. It goes on and on and on. But we ought to sing of his love forever. We ought to, we ought to delight in singing about God's love. Amen? With my mouth, I will, I will make your faithfulness known. And look at what the next three words say. Through all generations. We need to be reaching all generations, don't we? We need to be touching all generations. And that's why... I personally, I'm excited about the number of young people that are coming to youth group on Wednesday and some on Sunday night. Um, the number of young people who went to camp last week and, and had uh, the Lord speak to their heart. Um, then he says in verse, verse 2, I will declare that your love stands firm forever. Your love stands firm forever. That you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. Look at Psalms 92 and verse 2 for just a minute. Just a cross reference here. 92 and verse 2. Proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. That's what we ought to be doing. Proclaiming his love in the morning and his faithfulness at night. Verse 3,
You said, Psalms 89, verse 3, You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I've made a covenant. I have sworn to David, that's King David, my servant. And I've said to King David, I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. He says, the promise to David was, your throne is going to be sure through all generations. Then, in, in another Bible that I say, not in this Bible, it gives the word Selah. You know what Selah means? Pause and reflect. Think about this. That's what God says he would do. And then verses 5 through 7, these are great verses. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the Holy One. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord, and who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings in the council of the holy ones. God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. And we were out at, at Yellowstone National Park and our, our fun day driving around. Uh, I'm not sure how much fun it was driving through the buffalo herd because we did have buffalo on the road with us. More buffalo than you I've ever seen in my life. They're big, by the way. They're really, really big. But, uh, but just looking at mountains, the things that God has made, just gorgeous. The sky, and we had beautiful weather at that time. The heavens declare the glory of God. Another passage says the firmament shows his handiwork. It shows that God is great, that God made all of this. Verse 8 through 13, he talks about the power and glory of God. Have you recently considered the power and the glory of God? And we live in our own little world, in our own little place. We drive our car, we sit in our house. Sometimes we don't even look out and see what God has done, what He's created in this world. We ought to do that. I, one of the things that I enjoy, and I've said this so, so many, many times, is getting out on the trail and just seeing what God, God has made. One thing about my, my littles, that, that I'll put them in the wagon, and I'll tell them when they're in that wagon, now tell me what animals you see. And uh, they'll see a turtle or they'll see a... I've seen a snake. That's a lot of fun, seeing a snake. Uh, I, 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 I almost hit one yesterday. I don't know what would have happened if I hit him, but he wasn't too big and bad, I don't but just to see what God has created. The beauty of God's creation. Don't forget that. In verses 8, uh, eight through 13, he says, Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. God is always faithful. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. You crushed Rahab like one of the slain with your strong arm, you scattered your enemy. The heavens are yours, and the yours also is the earth. And you founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south, Tabor and Hermon. Sing for joy at your name. You, you are the one that is Lord. Verse 13. Your arm is endowed with power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand is exalted. Not, not to say anything about you left-handed people, but God often talks about the right hand of God because the majority of people are right-handed and the really smart people are left-handed. That's just, I understand, the way that any left-handed people here anyway. Just a couple of you. Uh, but isn't that something? It's his right hand. He's strong. You know, we got to remember that little nursery song that we learned as children and that my nursing home people love to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Or the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but what? He is strong. He is strong. And so when you're feeling your weakest, you need to realize that God is the strongest. And then he talks about some qualities in verses 
14 through 18, he says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. You know those are so important in this world. That we have righteousness, that's doing the right thing. And justice, that, that, that the right thing is accomplished even in the lives of others. And love and faithfulness have to be together. Don't tell me you love me if you're not going to be faithful to me. Church, church family, church members, don't say you love your church, and yet you're not faithful to the Lord that you come to church to worship. And in a marriage relationship, don't, don't tell your partner that you love your partner, but then not be faithful to them. Then he says in verse 15, Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence. You walk in the light of his presence. I'm thinking of that hymn that says, And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me, what? I am his own. Walk in the presence, the light of your presence. And, and that reminds me of First John that says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, right? Verse 16, They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for your, you are their glory and their strength. And by your favor, you exalt our horn. By your favor, Lord. Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord. Our king to the Holy One of Israel. Righteousness, justice. He says, happy, happy. Don't you want to be happy? I, I want to be happy. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. The word happy really is the word blessed. Blessed um, are those that walk with him. We walk with him. We're going to be blessed. And then verses 19 through uh, 37, that's a long portion. It talks about God is a covenant God. He keeps his promises. He kept his promises to David. He'll keep his promises to us. Verses 19 through 37. Let's read there. It says, Once, once you spoke in a vision to your faithful people, you said, I have bestowed strength on a, on a warrior. I've raised up a young man from among the people. I have found David. My servant. By the way, David was the most unlikely person to be the king of Israel. And with my sacred oil, I have anointed him. To anoint means to set apart for a place of service. I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him. My, my, arm, my, my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not get the better of him. The wicked will not oppress him. Remember who was after David? It was King Saul. King Saul was jealous of David. Verse 23, he says, God, God says, I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My, my faithful love will be with him, and, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea and his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. That's who you are, God. And I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. I will maintain my love to him forever, and my covenant with him will never fail. I will establish his line forever. His throne, as long as the heavens endure. That's what I'm going to do, God says. And if his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes, if they violate my decrees and fail to keep my commands, I will punish their sin with the rod, their iniquity with flogging. But I will never take my, I will not take my love from him, nor will I ever betray my faithfulness. He says, I'm going to be faithful to David. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness and I will not lie to David, that his line will continue forever and his throne endure before me 
like the sun. It will be established forever like the moon, the faithful witness in the sky. You know, the sun and the moon, we can count on them. But you have, but you have rejected, you have spurned, you have been very angry with your anointed one. So he said, God is a God of covenant. He kept his promises. But then in verse 38, he shifts gears and he says, but you have been unfaithful. You have been very angry with your anointed one. You have renounced the covenant of your servant, with your servant, and have defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken through all his walls and reduced his stronghold to ruin. All who pass by him have plundered him. He has become a scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes, and you have made all of his enemies rejoice. Indeed, you have turned back the edge of the sword and have not supported him in battle. So here God turns against the anointed one. You have put an end to his splendor and cast his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth. You have covered him with a mantle of shame. If you've studied the Old Testament, you've seen how David fled and how he had to run, how he had to hide the cave, and how even at one time he could have killed King Saul, yet he didn't do it. He cut off the corner of his robe instead. And the reason he, he did that, by the way, is uh, his men said, why didn't you kill him? He said, because I can't touch the no Lord's anointed. Saul is the Lord's anointed, and David was the Lord's anointed. And then he asked a question in verse 46. How long, Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how fleeting is my life. For what you, futility you have created, all humanity. So the psalmist is saying here, is, is life really worth it? Been there at the uh, old faithful geyser. I dropped everybody on the bus off. People were running toward the geyser, so they all ran. I had to park the bus. Guess what? I parked the bus and missed the geyser. So they said about an hour and 30, 40 minutes later, it's going to go off again. So we went and found some lunch, and walked around, and wandered around. And then I'm sitting there. You know, some of these people that were there, they go there all the time, apparently. They knew exactly when that geyser was supposed to go off. Well, I got out there, and I sat there, and I thought, Old Faithful ain't coming. <laughs> I said, it didn't seem like it was ever going to happen. And then it started to spitter, sputter, spitter, sputter, spitter. Oh. And I think, you know, God is more faithful than Old Faithful. But Old Faithful still spouts off. And God is faithful. We can count on God. But he says here, how long, Lord? How long? Is it with utility? By the way, after it went off, a minute, a minute and a half, what did Derry, something like that, wasn't long, three minutes. Wasn't long. As soon as I saw that, I thought of an old song some of you older people will remember. Now you're wondering if you're going to be that person. Is that all there is? Is that all there is, my friend? You know the rest of it? And let's keep dancing anyway, you know. The whole deal, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Sometimes we think, is that all? God, you have more for me? Yes, he does. It's more of him. Not necessarily more of what we want. Not more of enjoyment. You know, you know uh, a lot of money will be blown at the state fair in the next couple of weeks. That's what the people who are running the fair hope. It's a lot of money to be blown. Why do people do that? They want to have fun. They want to have some satisfaction in life. They want a little bit of a thrill. It doesn't last long. But what God does in our life last forever. When we come and, and we feel and sense His presence and we experience the glory of the Lord, that lasts forever. We have peace in our hearts. 
Sunday night, I had the opportunity to share the gospel with a young lady, a friend of hers. <laughs> to be honest with you, they came in the church about uh, 6.30. And Jim came down here to the front and said, there's somebody that needs to talk to you. So I went back there and I said, I said I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to talk to you right now, but I'll help you with what you need if you'll sit down and watch the rest of the they sat right back there in the wing, and they attentively watched the concert. And I took them back into my office and shared the gospel with both of them. They didn't get gloriously saved at that moment, but they did listen. They heard the gospel. <clears throat> and then I took them to a grocery store. They needed food. I helped them be able to get something to eat. Then I invited them to come and join us here. The gal has a job. She said sometimes she works 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I showed her on the, on the business card how you can go to the website. You can watch the services online. She really liked that idea. You'd be surprised, by the way, if you haven't ever looked on there, how many people are hitting our site and hearing, Lord willing, the messages that are going out. So... He goes on to say here, I lost my place here, let's see. Uh, verses 40, 38 through 45, he talks about how people quit serving him. And then verses 46, he says, How long, Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will, you, will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how fleeting is my life? Have you created me with futility? Then verse 48, he said, Who can live and not see death? Or who can escape the power of the grave? We're all going to die. We're all going to die. We just don't know when it is. So then the psalmist says this. Lord, where is your former great love? Which in your faithfulness you swore to David. Where is your love, God? Remember earlier we said I could sing you your love forever. And now he's saying, Lord, where is your love? Remember, Lord, how... How your servant has been mocked. Ever been mocked for your faith? How I bear in my heart the taunts of all the nations. The taunts with which your enemies, Lord, have mocked. Which with, with which they have mocked every step of your anointed one. He says, God, people have made fun of me. People have tried to kill me. So then he turns around. And ends the psalm with this verse. I, I can't believe it. Praise be to the Lord forever. Amen. And amen. He said, I've been ridiculed, I've been mocked, I've been cursed, probably been spit on, been chased, been hit. Praise the Lord forever. You know, no matter what happens, I'm not sure about you, but no matter what happens, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve the Lord. I, I was on the phone yesterday, I'll close with this and then we'll pray, with one of my former teenagers from my first youth group after college. And I had, we had, we had uh, four years of youth ministry in college, my wife and I worked together. And then we went and established, God allowed us to ha have a youth ministry where we do a a whole lot like what Jonathan does here. We'd go out and collect them up on a bus and bring them in, except for we brought them to our house. And I had a 48-passenger bus, a 19, uh, 19 uh, what year was that? 1964 Chevrolet bus, 48 passengers. And I drove that bus all around the, the, the circle of Dothan, Alabama, Circle City, they call it. I'd go out and pick up these kids and bring them to, to our youth meeting at our house, and we'd have 50, 70, 500 young people come. So I was talking to one of them yesterday, and I said, hey, we're coming through Alabama. We would like to get some of the kids together. Now, now listen, we were 21, 22. We were 21 through 26 while we were there. We were kids ourselves. So our kids are now in their middle 50s to early 60s. So I'm on the phone with this gal, and I said, uh, sure would love to come to your church and preach. She said, just call my pastor. 
called her pastor, and we're scheduled, I'm scheduled to preach on January 4th in Dothan, Alabama. It's my first post-pastorate gig that I know of, okay? And I'm going to preach for my old teenagers. Uh, it, it's really interesting. We're having a conversation, and we're talking about the ones that have died already. A bunch of them are already gone. But praise the Lord, some of them are not. We'll have a gathering together, and maybe somebody will come to Christ, but more importantly, maybe somebody will come back to the Lord, remembering what they learned earlier. So, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Please be in prayer for Linda Entelman. She was pretty sick earlier this week, but she sounded a lot better on the phone today. So, she says her second bout with COVID, and she said it's the worst bout. Secondly, pray for um, Will, a husband. She uh, has to get tested twice a month, and this time she tested positive, but she's not sick at all, so she's at home. And um, pray for Pastor Jonathan as he's ministering up in Minnesota. He'll be back this weekend. Uh, any other any other special requests that you know of? Brother Ron. What about him? Sick. Okay. Hospice. Okay. That's hard. Brother Rock. Anybody else? Let me remind you that Judy will be here for choir practice. Don't run away. She'd like for you to stay for choir practice. Okay. And uh, let's let's split up into groups of three or four and, and pray tonight. Can we do that? Groups of three or four. Uh, you got to get up and move. Remember, it doesn't work if you stay still. You got to find somebody you can pray with. <laughs> you just turn around. Everybody get in the group. <laughs>